designer and poster artist. And he seemed to do work for almost everyone in town. Uh, magnificent work in the great tradition of American theater posters like Paul Davis. And uh, I was fortunate enough to begin working with him about three years ago. Uh, he's done innumerable posters for me. I then encountered Louis as an actor in Edward Albee's The Zoo Story. Uh, I was stunned, astonished uh, by the coiled ferocity of his performance. And tonight we are being introduced to Louis Podlowski playwright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slope Parade by Louis Podlowski. So we begin. The years of television have brought us many break-the-mold moments. In news, it was the Kennedy assassination, the moon landing, 9-11. In sports, it was the immaculate reception, Tiger Woods, and the Red Sox winning the World Series. One thing's for certain, though, be it TV then or cable now, you can't change the channel without seeing this man's face. He's been on television, cable, and all sorts of other films for the better part of the last quarter century. He's comedy lore, and even the youngest comedy enthusiast will recognize the name Max the Panda Hirsch. <laughs> Tonight, we'll pull back the layers. We'll get to know the man so many of us have seen, laughed at, and loved. He's more popular as his characters as he is himself. Tonight, we'll attempt to get to know the man behind it all. Who is the real Panda Man? <laughs> <laughs> How are you tonight? Oh, quite well, thank you again. Let's start with something academic, all right. What do you think of the television programs that are on these days? Oh, I think they're quite clever, responsible. Really? Oh, of course. I was in television many, many years ago. Uh, you know, uh, society changes, as does the economy, the politics, everything. Everything changes. Uh, we, we can't expect television to be exempt. But aren't you a little ticked off at some of the garbage they have on TV nowadays? Oh, no. No? No. no uh, in my estimation, it's uh, easy to call that which you don't like garbage. Now, don't you think they use similar words for what I was trying to do back then? Well, there's a difference. You're a legend. <laughs> what is a legend in television, really? Mm -hmm. Well, someone who breaks new ground. Well, back then, we did not reward people for that. Uh, people who broke ground were, were out there. So what you're saying is, no matter the era, TV will always have its stinkers? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and you don't think that the 50s and 60s, your era, had better programs? No, of course not. Why? Well, simple. Uh, times change. And the, the things around us have to change. Them. Even television? <laughs> even television. In fact, even especially television. Yes, but you know what? We have all these shows. And, and now with cable, we have even more. And everybody's put their dog for a show. And it isn't even the best dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to understand, television is business. Yes, and the suits control everything. <laughs> You're very passionate. Yeah, but don't you care? Ian, you work for a television company. I know, but well, you know what? You have to make exceptions. No, no. yours is the best, you don't make mistakes. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you were nominated for an Oscar. Yep, I lost. <laughs> 1974? Yes. Beaten by De Niro for his role in uh, The Godfather Part Two. Well, if you can't win. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means I don't consider it a loss. I, I was happy to be in this company. Oh, come on. Oh, Ian, I see what you're trying to do here. What? Hey, you want me to lash out at uh, in Hollywood and my mother. Well, Whatever this part. You want me to lie. No, I don't want you to lie. I just want you to know. You want to know what pisses me off. 
Well, because it makes for good television. No, sir, I just want you to tell it as it is. Are you sure? Yes, sir. All right. Viewers out there, this Keep is Keep the camera on him. May I continue? <laughs> yes, sir. Folks, there is no great mystery to it. It's a job. It's a job I had a long time ago. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it. I wasn't then, and I am not now. Uh, I made people laugh, and, and I'm told I still do that. That pleases me. All these years later, that's all I ever wanted. Uh, you don't really need to know me. I don't need to know you. All that matters is I made you laugh. If I still do a rerun, that makes me happy. The rest is just news. It doesn't matter. You don't, you don't need to know anything about me. All that matters is I, I make you smile. That's it. Sounds to me like you're trying to avoid my interview. <laughs> I won't answer any questions that you have. The affairs. Uh, true. Next. The gambling emotions. <laughs> also true. <laughs> you went up and broke them. Yes, broke No, it sounds to me as much as you want to call television uh, the garbage, as you say. You sure are trying to be on par with that level of journalism. I don't understand. Well, you're doing the same thing here with your interview. It's aggressive nature, you're competing tactics. Does that bother you? No, no, but I, I think you should at least admit that your program does the very thing it admonishes. I see. No, believe me, Ian, I don't mind. I like the tough question. It's refreshing. Yeah, you know, it's a heck of a lot better answering that. Who are your influences for the 15th time? Well, Mr. Hirsch, I'd just like you to know I do have the utmost respect for you. Thank you, and I appreciate that. <laughs> he was born Maxwell Milton Hirsch, the only son of Francine and William Hirsch. Her a seamstress and homemaker, him a, a steel worker with ties to organized crime. It was at the age of nine that Max lost his father, murdered in a botched truck heist, the details of which <laughs> Max has not spoken about publicly. Until now. So, tell us, what happened to your father? You have to understand, I was just a little boy. Yes. And the only information I got was from my mom who had first lied to me. She was embarrassed to admit that Pop would be involved with such unsavory people. Of course. Uh, she would just say it was a random act. You know, it wasn't until years later that my Aunt Juliet uh, told me that he was, uh, was uh, desperate. He started working with some debt collectors in the neighborhood. He even carried a gun a few times. As, she uh, as far as I know, uh, he wanted out. You know, he made his money with these guys. He wanted to be left alone. But they, they took that as some sort of disloyalty. Uh, they thought he was going to roll over on her. Maybe it was a possibility. So uh, one night, a, a routine hijacking of a cigarette truck. My father was shot point blank behind the right ear. An execution. Uh, nobody could prove that. that. That seems to be the intention. And there were no witnesses. <laughs> There's no such thing as a witness in Brooklyn. Oh. <laughs> um, so how did you get the nickname Hannah? Oh, I'm sure that story's been told. Come on, try us. Oh, well, I was a tough kid in New York back then. At least I tried to be. Uh, I had two goals. I wanted to survive, and I wanted to be funny. Uh, I made a few pals along the way, and one day one of them says, you know, you never can't tell what side Max is on. Uh, he's the hero, or he's the villain. He's, he's black, and he's white, he's Clark Kent, and Superman. He's a panda bear. Well, that was it. And it stuck. It stuck for the rest of my life. What year was this? Oh, I don't know. I was in my 20s, maybe 1953. More than 40 years ago. I give it to and you've been known as Panda ever since. Ever since. Not much of a tough guy there, now is it? <laughs> well, I have to say, you've been a plenty tough with me tonight, Panda. Uh, well, I just want you to reach for that brass ring, and I like you. <laughs> I like you too, Mr. Hurt. Okay. Well, now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Let's talk about your favorite co-stars. Oh, there were so many wonderful people I had the opportunity to work with. Who was your favorite? Oh, that's impossible to do with someone like that. Martin Landau? Oh, of course. <laughs> and yeah, James. Rickles. Great man. Funny man. I love him too. Lucy. Oh, well, what can you say about that lady? A jet. You absolutely had no favorites. Uh, well, Ian, uh, I had the opportunity to work with some of the best entertainers uh, ever, ever lived. I know that sounds like a bad answer, but it's true. I was fortunate. I came along in time and place. 
But so many uh, wonderful people wanted to work with me. And to my astonishment, they asked me to be on their show. It's quite beautiful. Many, many wonderful television moments. Good memories. Uh, yes, well, Ian, uh, as I get older, uh, I realize when, when I feel truly elated, completely satisfied and content, I know to, to say, uh, it's, it's not going to last. This moment. No, no, not at all. It's just, uh, I know that to savor a good moment much better now than when I was younger. In 1952, he got his first big break. ABC gave him a year contract and full control of his own variety show, a deal almost unheard of by today's standards. He took the opportunity and ran with it, creating a classic, iconic television program and producing some of the most memorable characters and greatest outtakes, bloopers they call them nowadays, in American TV history. He would go on to produce The Panda Hour, other shows, even spin-offs of his own characters, well into the next two decades. He also launched a career in film, landing that Academy Award nomination in 1974 for Lost Soul. He had other roles, even some cameo appearances, but the reality is he's best known for his triumphs in television. Now, does it ever bother you that most of the people who know you today do so from that long ago television show? Oh, no, not at all. No? No, no, Ian, once again, these are different times. I had my time. I, I embraced it. I took from it. Some would say I stole from it. Uh, I used my fame to, to get many, many things back then. Uh, girls, booze, money, what have you. I'm not ashamed of it. Use fame for what you use fame for, for selfish reasons. Well, what would you do? I was a poor kid rummaging through garbage cans for a crust of bread, and all of a sudden, I'm free Sinatra. Everything was at my request. I take advantage of it, but I did. Uh, but even then, you know, I, knew, I knew it wouldn't, wouldn't last. I knew eventually it'd all be gone. Uh, my only regret is, is how it affected Mark. Your wife? Yes, yes. She was a, she was a trooper. She was there for it all. From being poor to all the glitz to a modest, comfortable lifestyle, now she, she was with me for all. Amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a Hollywood uh, uh, marriage that suffered many, many setbacks, and she, and she stuck with me through it all. What would you say to someone starting out in the business now? <laughs> now, there's a repeated question. I've heard that one a hundred times. Once more? Well, I wouldn't say anything. You know, everyone thinks that I or any, any celebrity or star has some formula that can't be broken, and it's just not true. All I did, and all anyone could or should do, is, is keep trying. Uh, I caught a lucky break, and I was successful. That's it. There's no, there's no magic. Nothing I knew then, uh, what I know now, can explain it. Uh, I got a lucky. Well, sir, I have to tell you, it has been a pleasure. Well, same here. Thank you. In my three decades or so of broadcasting, no interview or subject has struck me quite as effectively as Panda Hirsch. When I first interviewed him at the tender age of 23, I thought I had all the answers. He quickly proved that I don't. In just over an hour, he taught me about life, love, and how to deal with pressures surrounding people in the spotlight. Since that time, I've learned to shut my mouth, so to speak, <laughs> but it was Panda who first taught me to shut up and listen. In keeping with his guidance, I have to get back to what this story is about. It isn't about me. It's about a gentleman, an entertainer, beloved by millions, named Max the Panda Hirsch, who died today at the age of 84 at home, surrounded by his wife and children. Details of the death are still being established, but it's believed the family will be issuing a statement later in the week. Upon hearing the news, friends and family and, and fans took to Twitter and Facebook to express their <laughs> sorrows at the loss of their panda. It's been a pleasure airing footage from my interview with him from 28 years ago. It seems so long ago. Back then, I, I was so grateful for the time that we had together and kind of ashamed that we never got back in touch since. We'd always intended to, but things have a way of getting away from you. 
even important things. Foolishly, I thought Max would always be around. It seems that even in death, he's still teaching me. I'm okay with that. Oh, you are only making yourself 
and, and Love insane trying to hide her staff staff like dropping like flies and, and you know, she's dead on the floor like that. And then we'll all know. How many days is it? Three days? Uh, well, um, it, it's, it's 420. This is David. I need to know. Jeff, the shift's about to change. I need to make my rounds. Okay, call. Okay. Are you sure you don't want me to call? No, I am. I just need to think. Wow. I would say once you're aware that you've given your life to your job. Oh, come on, you know me job. better than that. Oh, I sure do. <laughs> I just. I have to go. You know, Jeff, I'm going to go make my rounds now. Um, shift's changing, um, and, and I might. Well, I Nothing. Um, I have to make my rounds. What? You might not see me alive again? I wasn't going to say that. Well, you didn't have to. Listen to me. As soon as I get some rest, I'm back in here chugging on you. I'm staying here. I just need to rest a bit. That's so sweet, honey. Please try. I'll try.
blood sample while testing. And, and you sure that's why? You... Yes. Talk to me. Where does it end? It ends with you. No, it's got back away. <laughs> what did I tell you about shouting? <laughs> He's in the hospital now. 
He's making his rounds. He'll be here in 10 minutes.
You got that reference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Nicely done. But I gotta step up my complaints. You would rather I didn't get it? Yeah, you don't get it. I have a better shot of getting what I want. Well, maybe you can Wikipedia the end. The, uh, another haunted house address on your phone. This is serious. I know. I'm not comfortable. What choice do we have, huh? We can't drive in this mess. And we'll sleep, and before you know it, we'll, we'll be having breakfast on, our, and on, on your way. I'm not eating anything they serve. I'm having your way. Is that a Burger King reference? No. <laughs> Dumbass. It's just an expression. Do whatever you want. I want to leave. We can't leave. It's just too nasty out there. We might as well make the best of things. Why did they invite us? We don't even know them. <laughs> <laughs> to be nice. They knew we could not go all the way back to our hotel and shit. You don't think it's just a little bit strange? We had drinks with them all night. We met another couple in a bar, and after a few hours, you think it's safe? It's safer than driving. There were no other hotels in the area. The offer her, I accepted. What's the big deal? <laughs> the big deal is that this place is messed up. Come on. You were enjoying their company, laughing it up. I was being courteous, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to say that now, now that we're here. Aha! Uh -huh, so you admit this place is weird. I admit it has been a dry, it has a dry bed and a room with a roof. Because I'm tired. Why can't you just accept this as a simple, nice offer? I don't know. I just can't. Oh, Jesus. Cue lobster balls. <laughs> you really need to stop watching this kind of program. It's not that. It's instinct. Well, it was your instinct to go to bed and breakfast at that time, too. That was different. That was a fight. Well, maybe you should just try and trust me this time. Everybody, I think you're okay. everybody who was a victim thinks they're okay at the time. That's the whole idea. There are many skeptical victims. Yes. We go out for a few drinks, meet a strange couple, it starts storming, they invite us to stay at their place, then bam, next thing you know, we're somebody's lampshade. <laughs> Tonight on Inve 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 Investigation Discovery. Don't mock me. You're very annoyed. Because of that weird ass. Everything okay in here? Perfect. Thank you. Well, I think we should be fine here. Um, thank you so much. Great. I'll be back in a few with some towels. <laughs> you were going to say something bad. Get us kicked out of here. More like escape. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the, only, the only other option is to sleep in our car. Fine by me. <laughs> 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 Let me play the advocate here for a bit, okay? Okay. Let's say you're right. Yes! Let's say that! Don't let me. Oh, you're right. Silly me for using the organ you're least interested in. <laughs> <laughs> May I continue? Thank you. Let's say you are right, that, you, that these people are, are indeed the Texas Chainsaw Manchesters, and we decide out of the blue, after already getting tucked in and checked on by our host of towels on the way, and all of a sudden we decide to leave. Okay. If there is an agenda here, if they intend to cut off parts of us and use them in any tiny sourdough sandwiches for their next game, yes, then it doesn't really matter that it doesn't. They have already made up their minds that briskly exiting would only agitate the situation and lead them to perhaps more violent tendencies and a sense of immediacy and desperation. Whereas if I am right, and these people through a bit kooky, though a bit kooky, yet extremely hospitable, face the same situation, they will not only be offended, but it may alter the way they deal with people they do not know in the future. If we leave, we could be adding a layer of distrust in them. We could potentially alter their personality and making otherwise very friendly people think twice about being friendly the next time. Is that what you want? You're a moron. <laughs> I love you too. Let me get this straight. 
You would rather just lay down here and fall asleep with full knowledge that we may wake up looking at our hosts wearing our fingers as earrings. Or the flip side scenario that we spent a bad night in a weird place. You were willing to take that chance with yourself and with me without even thinking about getting the hell out of here and putting up a fight and maybe we get away and maybe not. But on foot, running to the car versus in PJs, in the bed, the option should be academic. Or we get the hell out of a weird couple's house. People we will never see again. Yeah. You're willing to just lie down on both options, be it serial killer or strangers, just because you don't want to be rude? <laughs> I, I just don't want to jump to conclusions. Fresh <laughs> out. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the bathroom is through those doors and to the left. You can both shower in the morning. We're serving breakfast at about 10 a.m. But if you'd like to sleep in a little later, we'll be serving lunch in a few hours after that. I just want you both to have the option. Sounds wonderful. Yes. Sheer delight. <laughs> we are so glad the two of you are staying here tonight. <laughs> and we don't know what we would do if you were just out there in this mess right now. Well, we really appreciate it. That pillow looks fine. It's perfectly fine. Oh, no. You need to be comfortable. I can manage. It's really fine. Now, what kind of a host would I be if you two just weren't chipmunk comfortable? <laughs> I'll be right back, you little cutie. <laughs> I was 
Yeah. What if? What? What if you're right? No. <laughs> they're just nice people, and you're you overreacting, and you should just stop watching crime shit. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Fine. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Let's just put this behind us, okay? Okay. <laughs> We'll deal with your paranoia another time. Let's, let's just <laughs> sleep. Okay, okay. I'm calming down. I'm <laughs> myself. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for understanding. Of course. It's, it's just enough of this now. Huh? You're right. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> just relax. Okay, it's just... What? <laughs> tree outside the window looks really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look in. When your pillow comes back, sleep on your stomach. Okay. Time for sleep. so much again for your hospitality. We really appreciate it. Yeah, about that. Um, we were talking about this downstairs, and we realized we don't know you that well. Fuck. Gustav. And you? I'm here, Dad. When did you die? In World War II. You were a soldier? Yes. You seem sad. I miss things in my life. Oh, so do I. Hmm. When did you die? Three months ago. <laughs> you seem so young. Well, I was uh, just wandering around and 
What seemed like a nice place to sit. Oh, I, I like it here. I like it. I just discovered it. I was just visiting my daughter's house. <sighs> That's got to be tough. Yes, they all still seem so sad. Three months ago? I'll bet. How old were you when you died? 23. Oh, well, I was 16. You're too young. Look, I had 40 years on you. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. So, Gustav. Hmm? What's what? it like? Not like anything I've ever been taught. No? No. Can we age? Only mentally. So in reality, you're far older than me. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> 